Hey guys, Matt again, and uh, I'm just doing a quick follow-up video from the last one I made uh, with Dave Dugdale. If you haven't seen uh, the video that uh, we sort of collaborated on, it's uh, this one here. So go and check out Dave Dugdale's awesome channel. Have a look at the 8-bit versus 10-bit. Now, 8-bit versus 10-bit is a great argument to have, mostly because everyone seems to be an expert, <laughs> but no one actually seems to be showing results. And that's the problem with the internet. Everyone's an expert at typing and bugger all people actually back it up with results. To top that off, um, I think every second person who commented on this video said, oh, there's no point doing a test on YouTube because I can see banding, I can see banding everywhere. And it's like, yeah, I mentioned that in the video. And um, <laughs> of course you're gonna see banding because it's been compressed once during my screen capture, another time as I you know, converted it to H.264 for delivery, and then YouTube's converted it a third time. Um, so please, if you're watching this video and you're gonna comment, um, don't tell me that there's banding and you can see banding in the video, because I know, everyone knows. Um, yeah, um, go ahead to my blog, go to the download section, and um, download the clip. Here it is here. Play with it yourself. Um, a lot of people have been saying, oh, it's not a fair comparison because you know the shallow depth of field is making this uh, difficult to compare the two cameras and all that sort of shit. I, I don't agree. I think this is even more unfair to the Sony since this is a perfectly smooth gradient without detail. So it's gonna show banning even more than you would see when there is detail with a longer depth of field. Um, in my experience anyway, I, I see banning more often um, when there's a very smooth gradient like that um, without detail. So anyway, I'm not gonna be able to please everyone. And the whole point of this video and for me rambling on and swearing is that I'm just sick of people sort of trashing a camera and quickly backing it up with this, you know, statement that, you know, 8-bit's not good enough for prof professional work. The reason why we see banding is because of this and this and this. But again, back that shit up because it's actually, I'm not seeing this problem that everyone's cr like crying about basically. Um, and to, to sort of take that a step further, look, I know that 8-bit is not superior to 10-bit or equal to 10-bit. I know that. I know the limitations of 8-bit. But what I guess I'm trying to say is, since buying this camera, I'm just not seeing the problems that I thought I would see. And I, or if I am, I'm seeing them very subtly. They're just, they're not really a problem. Um, so I guess as a creator and a professional, just be careful about what you read and test things for yourself. And just don't be too worried about having an 8-bit 420 camera in this day and age. Because honestly, they're fucking good. They're just really good. And I don't know, I just want you to feel good about your camera or maybe consider purchasing a camera for $5,000 less than a 10-bit variant um, because, yeah. Now, <laughs> I've been rambling a lot already, so I thought I'd take the camera down to the beach and shoot some blue skies um, because that's what everyone assures me that I'm gonna get banding with blue skies in S-Log2 and S-Log3. And it's just not the case, I don't know. Do I have a magical version of the A7S II? I don't think I do. Um, okay, again, I'm not disputing that 8-bit is a problem, or can be, but I am disputing that it doesn't seem to be, not very often anyway. Um, so, but this is a huge, another disclaimer, you're gonna get sick of me saying this. If you can see banding here, that's because of the internet. That's because of compression, three, three waves of compression. I'm telling you right now that I am not seeing a single band in this sky, okay? And um, we're gonna just go through a few of these grades that I've done. Should I, see be, should I be seeing banding here? Is this what everyone's saying? Should I be seeing hideous skin tones from the A7S II? I'm not seeing them. Should, can we grade something like extremely with, you know, S-Log2, S-Log3? Yeah, we can. Okay, so. I'm not saying it's a perfect camera. There are problems. Um, first of all, I'm not seeing banding in the sky. So let's just forget about that. And, oh yeah, another thing. Okay, so there's about 80 comments on there where people are like, 4K downscaled to 1080p makes it a 10-bit signal, basically. And then other people are like, that's bullshit. And other people are like, this isn't a fair test because you're comparing a 1080p camera to a 4K being downsampled on 1080p timeline. We know that shit. We know it. Show me examples. I'm not seeing anyone show me examples. Everyone's afraid of showing examples. Why? Because it's difficult to prove what they're saying. So here I am trying to prove what I'm saying. Be a man about this shit. Prove your own shit. <laughs> um, yeah, so 
I tested that out too. I was like, okay, smart asses. If uh, ten, if we recorded this at 1080p in the camera, is that going to make a difference? Am I going to see banding then? Surely, according to all of your statements, I will see banding if I just recorded 1080p in camera. But I'm going to tell you and show you right now if I can fucking find this stuff. Um, oh yeah, I did some Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera tests as well. This isn't very organized, is it? Sorry, guys. Have I opened the wrong project? Um, yes, I have. So, we're getting there. Where is it? Where is it? 8-bit versus 10-bit. Save. I wasn't planning on doing this, so if this is just a train wreck of a video, I'm sorry. But anyway, here we are. So, let's have a look at the metadata of this clip. 1920 by 1080. I recorded this internally to the camera at 1920 by 1080. And I understand that this is technically downsampled in camera. So don't post shit about that either, please. <laughs> but, so just to sort of put this to rest as well, here's a lovely blue sky in the middle of the day, and we're recording at 1080p, we're not downsampling, and let's just have a look at our project. So our project is 1080p. Um, we're not doing any downscaling, nothing like that. So, I should be seeing banding right now. And if you can see banding on here, that's because of the internet. Just, I don't know, trust me. No one trust me. You just have to. I'm not seeing a single problem with this guy. And um, let's just go in here. Oh yeah, so I put this gradient on here to try and make it band. Not seeing shit. If you can see banding there, again, it's because of the internet compressing this video. There is no banding here. Go and test it out with your own camera. Or if you're so adamant about this problem, show it to me. Send me a clip, and then let's like figure it out together. Part of me is being arrogant and cocky, and the other part of me actually wants to like help you. I actually want to solve this problem, or get rid of this notion that you know 8-bit in today's cameras is not good for pre professional use. Um, I and like I've been reading a lot of comments like, you know, Matt, I'd love to believe you, but I had the A7S for a week, and it just I couldn't deal with the banding, and it's like, well, okay. I'm not seeing it, so maybe you just didn't spend enough time with the camera. I mean, let's be honest, when I bought my RED camera when it first came out, I was disappointed. The camera was delivering results that I was very disappointed with, and I was like, I've wasted all my money, I bought this amazing camera, I'm gonna send it back. But no, like what happens is you need to understand that you need to master every camera that you get. Every camera has problems, every camera has its own limitations and things like that. You sort of need to master it, don't give it a week. And don't take it out on a professional shoot until you've like experimented and trying to trying to get the best results. Anyway, not seeing banding here. This is 1080p, so yeah, you can just cancel all those comments. Sorry. <laughs> Unless you can back it up with actual results, send me a link so I can download stuff. I want to see the problem. I want to see it. And um, yeah. Anyway, let's go back to this other clip, um, the beach tests. And let's just have a look at some S-Log2 and S-Log3. So, where's my uh, master? Mm -mm -mm. Timeline one we're looking for, here it is. And thanks to Steph on the left and Laura on the right, or is my fiance gonna marry that chick in a couple of weeks actually. Um, yeah, here we are and we're on the beach. And you know, I've got a pretty hefty grade going on here. Nothing that simple, right? I'm using LUTs, I'm doing skin qualifiers, and I'm not seeing shit, I'm not seeing any problems, I'm just seeing great results. No noise in the blacks. No uh, chroma noise. No weird colors in, you know, the lower end of skin tones. I'm not seeing any of that shit. What is the problem here? Is the problem, and I, this is, I actually know what it is. People are experiencing banding artifacts, chroma noise with the A7S II or the A7S, because they're underexposing their image. That's it. So that is the problem. The reason I'm not seeing any problems is because I'm not, I'm exposing correctly. And when I say exposing correctly, I'm basically just exposing to the right. And you can tell me that's wrong, but I'm getting great results. I'm not getting blown highlights. I'm getting a filmic response to blown out highlights. And I'm not getting any issues whatsoever. I mean, this is fucking awesome. Um, yeah, so this one was S-Log3, this one was S-Log2, again S-Log2, with a slightly different exposure uh, variance. 
Um, then I tested out a few of the color profiles because I was just personally interested in a few of those. Um, and I mostly found that S-Log2 has the best skin tones. S-Log3 was a bit weird with skin tones, especially in underexposed areas of skin tones. And then, um, yeah. And then I know the next thing you guys are going to say in the comments as well, which is, yeah, but what about in poorly lit scenes? What about when I do underexpose with the wrong white balance? Yes, no fucking doubt. You're going to get problems with that shit. And the weaker the codec, the weaker the compre or the stronger the compression, yeah, you're going to suffer. The 8-bit 420 is really going to show you problems. So, like, I guess my advice is buy a better camera then. Um, yeah, like, of course, I know that's not an option. But if you can't expose an image properly because of your circumstances, well, I'm sorry, but don't trash the camera. Trash your circumstances. Other, better, other cameras will perform better, correct. If we were shooting with a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera in an underexposed, incorrectly white balanced scene, you're still going to get issues. I see issues, but sure enough, you won't probably see as many issues as you will with this camera. I get that. We all get that. I guess you know my point, you know my goals here. Um, just if you've got this camera, just keep playing with it, keep trying to master it, keep trying to figure some shit out. Um, because it is fucking amazing, and um, yeah, that's pretty much all I got to say. I think is it worth showing you some samples that I got uh, with? Oh yeah, actually no, there is something really. Just to wrap this video up, if you're still watching, <laughs> um, my next series of investigations is not about 4208 bit versus 4210 bit. I'm convinced that there's a bee stick of difference, and I know on paper there's a big difference. And I don't care if you're a Hollywood colorist. I don't care if you graded No Country for Old Men and you are that person. And I don't care if you write me a paragraph backed up with all your you know, experience and accolades and who you've worked for. I know. Like, you can write whatever the fuck you want, but show me 4208-bit versus 42210-bit and show me the nuances that you're talking about. It proved to me that it's like a big deal because I don't think it is. And until I see um, results, no offense, um, whatever you say is useless in the comments. And I'll try and be as polite as I can. And I'm a nice person. And I do want to just make the filmmaking world a better place and people to feel better about their gear and, and more importantly, understand the limitations of their gear. Speaking of limitations, my next series of investigations has very little to do with bit depth and a lot more to do with compression algorithms. So when the camera records to a deliverable codec like H.264, XAVCS, I think this is the problem. This is the big problem, not 4208-bit, okay? I think the, the compression is the main problem we're seeing here. And this is an awesome example of how compression on the A7S II is absolutely fucked. <laughs> In a beautifully lit scene like this at the beach, you know, with it's a wide shot. The only crazy detail we've got is out of focus back here and maybe in the hair, you know, but if you look at this shot, this shot absolutely falls apart in every frame. It is completely what I would call unusable for professional use. Why? Because the 30 to 1 compression or whatever it is, the compression algorithm of Longop H264 is absolutely destroying every single frame here. So if you can see um, square artifacts in this image, that's not because of YouTube compression. That's just literally because of camera compression. And what I'll do is I'll upload this to my blog as well so you can download it. And this, in this situation, there is too much fine detail for the camera to actually keep up with. Every time a bubble pops, the scene changes so drastically in terms of fine detail that the compression cannot deal with it. And it just creates blocky artifacts. And like, they're pretty bad as well. Like, I would honestly say that this is unusable for professional use. I'm just saying, this is my opinion. I'll try and find a real bad one. There was one where like a, a huge, just mass chunk of blocks just popped up. And um, yeah, so this is where compression falls apart. Hair blowing in the wind, um, grass, fine detail, grass blowing in the wind, water. Um, anything that changes rapidly with fine detail, it's gonna fall over. So that's gonna be the next series of my tests. Hopefully I'll post them if I get time, if I can be bothered, um, but yeah. I'll, I'll upload this blog, you can check that out for yourself. And what a great test would be if I had a Shogun. I would record this same scene with a Shogun at uh, 42210 bit. 
actually for two to eight bit that's what the a7s puts out and then uh, technically those blocks should just disappear because we're recording into an intermediate codec regardless of bit depth so hopefully in that situation that's where you would see a massive difference recording externally but this is a pretty unique scene I would say you're not going to see these problems very often sure you'll see them but it's good to know when they happen why they happen and how to get around it that's the whole point of these videos if you're offended by my language I'm sorry I'm trying to tone it down but fuck <laughs> I just get um, passionate about what I'm doing and I just want to share this knowledge with you guys and challenge people that don't back shit up with results um, so yeah but I do appreciate all the comments and there's been some wonderful comments and I've tried to uh, reply to as many as I could but I'm, I'm probably a week behind so sorry about that um, and I thought this video would sort of get back to oh yeah, get back to um, bloody messages going everywhere um, yeah anyway I'm gonna end this video now it's probably getting boring catch you later